ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு சோஷியாலஜிக்கல் திங்கர் சீரீஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி டிஸ்கஸிங் ஆர் கே மேர்டன் ஆர் கே மேர்டன் சோஷியாலஜி கேம் ஆஸ் அ கிரிட்டிசிசம் டு கிளாசிக்கல் ஃபங்க்ஷனலிசம் ஹூ ஆர் கிளாசிக்கல் ஃபங்க்ஷனிஸ் பீப்புள் லைக் இமைல் டேம் பீப்புள் லைக் மேலினோஸ்கி தே ஆர் கிளாசிக்கல் ஃபங்க்ஷனிஸ் தே ஹாவ் எக்ஸாஜரேட்டட் தி ஃபங்க்ஷன்ஸ் தே ஹாவ் எக்ஸாஜரேட்டட் சோஷியல் ஸ்டெபிலிட்டி ஆர் சோஷியல் ஆர்டர் அண்ட் தேர் ஃபோர் R.K. Martin criticizes classical functionalism. He is criticizing classical functionalism because Marxism criticized classical functionalism. So seeing how Marxism is displacing classical functionalism, R.K. Martin wanted to study classical functionalism thoroughly to find out why classical functionalism was criticized by Marxism. He found that there are three assumptions made by classical functionalists. Without testing, they have retained the assumption, which is why they are criticized these three assumptions which were not tested but still retained they are called as postulates why classical functionalists did not test the assumptions they did not test these assumptions because they believed that these assumptions are self evident truths which need not be tested the three assumptions made by classical functionalists are number 1 postulate of functional unity number 2 postulate of functional universalism number 3 postulate of functional indispensability come to the first postulate of functional unity classical functionalism is studying only about unity amongst the parts they rejected or they wishfully ignored disunity amongst the parts so rk martin says unity will be there disunity will be there amongst the parts present in the system study how much unity how much disunity don't conclude that society has only unity amongst the parts and there is no disunity at all take for example if there is a house there is present family members there is unity amongst the family members but there is also conflict or fights amongst the family members so no family is free from conflict and no family is also free from unity how much disunity how much unity that has to be studied number 2 postulate of functional universalism classical functionalism is studying only about functions functions means what positive contribution they have ignored dysfunctions and non functions so he says that study not just the functions of the part study dysfunctions as well as non functions you should study function dysfunction non function at three different levels that is at the level of the individual the level of the group and the level of the larger society because something may be functional for the individual but it may not be functional for the group take for example love marriage it may be functional for the individual because he is choosing his right to choose his spouse but it is not good for the group according to the group and that is why honor killing sociology of honor killing says that something which is functional to the individual may be dysfunctional to the group and therefore the group is executing those people who are going for the interfaith marriage or inter caste marriage he also says that functionalism studies only the manifest function ignored latent function what is manifest function manifest function or intended function take for example you are reading sociology what is the manifest function of sociology why you wanted to read sociology your intended function is sociology should make you ias officer that is the intended function of sociology which you really know for which you are studying sociology but there is one unnoticed function of sociology that unintended function is called as latent function that unintended function of sociology is when you come to the class to study sociology manifest function is learning sociology latent function is you develop friends in the class for developing friendship you are not coming to sociology class to learn sociology you are coming to sociology class but in the process unintended function happens that is latent function happens and that latent function is you become friends now come to the third postulate postulate of functional indispensability classical functionalism says that a part is indispensable because that part alone can perform that particular function so that part is indispensable that part cannot be changed r k martin says if you say part cannot be changed you are not able to explain social change which is why you are criticized by marxism as conservative parts can be changed a part if it is dysfunctional a part if it is having more strain then that part can be easily changed 
by a new part. The new part is called as functional alternative or functional equivalent. So using a new part, you can change the old part. When you change the new part, when you change the old part by a new part, then there is social change. So in this postulate of functional indispensability, R.K. Martin criticizes classical functionalism saying that parts are not indispensable, parts are dispensable, parts can be changed. R.K. Martin was very famous to write about middle range theories. What do you mean by middle range theories? Middle range theory is in the middle between the fact and the theory. Fact is a raw fact. Fact does not tell you any meaning. Fact is only a raw fact. Fact is not giving you any knowledge or information. Fact has to be processed and thereafter you develop a theory. But theory involves a higher order generalization. R.K. Merton says theory which is a higher order generalization. For example, theory of relativity or theory of gravity. They are higher order generalization. These higher order generalizations cannot be made in sociology because sociology is not a science. Science studies facts. Facts can be subjected to higher order generalization. You can make a law of fact or you can make a theory of fact. You can make a higher order generalization of fact. But sociology is not studying fact. Sociology studies values which cannot be generalized. So we can only make limited generalization not absolute generalization. Therefore let us have a middle range theory which will be having limited generalization not an absolute generalization like theory in science. His MRT therefore is a new theory which has been developed by R.K. Merton as a solution to the problems of studying society from scientific perspective. So let us not go by scientific perspective of sociology. Let us study sociology from social perspective. Let us have limited generalization not universal generalization like natural science. R.K. Merton was also saying that let us have a paradigm in sociology. Let us not have functionalism. Let us have functional analysis. Functionalism means what? It speaks only about the functions. Functional analysis means what? It will speak about function, dysfunction as well as non-function. So rather than calling functionalism as functionalism, let us call functionalism hereafter as functional analysis. Merton is extremely famous for his work on reference group. He says that people when they compare somebody above them, they are relatively deprived. So relative deprivation says that our assumptions about our position and our real position are not one and the same. My position is not my assumption. I assume that I am great, but my position is not great. Another important work of R.K. Merton is his study of reference group. What we feel about us is not about what we really are. It is about whom we really compare with. If we compare with somebody above us, we feel very down. If we compare with somebody below us, we are happy. So what is the reason for our subjective feeling. Our reason for our subjective feeling is not our objective position. Our reason for our subjective feeling is the choice of our reference group. Simple example, All India rank 2 will be very happy when he or she is seeing All India rank 4. But All India rank 2 will be really sad when he is seeing or she is seeing all India rank 1. If you see somebody above you, you feel very sad, you feel very deprived. You see somebody below you, you are happy. So deprivation is not absolute as Marx says. Deprivation is relative. If you go by Karl Marx, Marx says that the worker will feel deprived. All workers will feel deprived because of the exploitation present in capitalism. But R.K. Merton will oppose this and say that a worker will feel deprived only when he is seeing his owner. A worker will feel happy when he is seeing somebody below him. So always deprivation is not absolute. Deprivation is relative. Relative deprivation is based on the choice of the reference group. So this is a very important middle range theory of R.K. Merton on reference group. The masterpiece of R.K. Merton is his study of anomy and social structure. R.K. Merton was influenced by Emile Durkheim. Durkheim says that deviance is socially caused. Deviance is not because of 
the individual psychology deviances because of society Durkheim already said so R K Merton is extending what Durkheim already told R K Merton says people come to America with a great american dream that america will give them opportunity for mobility all people will come to america but all people are not given the opportunity as promised many people who come from other ethnic backgrounds migrants they feel that they are discriminated by america through its society through its social structure there is an inconsistency between the social structure and the aspirations of the individual there is incompatibility between culturally defined goals and the structurally available means people come they do not find opportunity but the goal is you have to be economically successful so what you do you deviate from the social norms you take up to illegitimate means in becoming economically successful when there is inconsistency between the cultural goals and the structural means there are adaptations made by individual the first individual is a conformist he is having the goal given by the society he is also having the means given by the society so he is not a deviant he is called as conformist the second person he is having a goal but the means will not be available society is not giving means but he is having a goal now the individual will try to realize the goal by deviating from the means given by the society he becomes innovator take for example legal avenue is not there for earning money one is going for illegal avenue of making money example bribe so bribe is an example of innovation and the one who is taking bribe is called as innovator there is a third person he is having the means but he is too much clinging on to the means that he is leaving the goal he is called as ritualist and his action is called as ritualism then there is a fourth person he abandons both means as well as goals he is called as retreatist and his action is called as retreatism and there is a fifth person he is changing the new goals the fifth person is called as rebel he is changing the old means by new means and old goals by new goals and his action is called as rebellion so these are the individual adaptations when there is inconsistency between the goals given by the society and the means given by the society r k merton therefore concludes that a deviant is not born a criminal is not born a criminal is made by the society it is society which is pushing the individual to commit the action called crime so individual is not suffering from psychological pathology he is only acting according to the goals he is only acting according to the compulsions of the society therefore he says that a deviant is also a conformist which means that he is deviating not because he wanted to deviate he is deviating because society is making him to deviate and this is what is the summary of rk martin thank you